Okay, so now we're ready to talk about the selection sort algorithm, and let's uh, recap what we uh, what we see in the selection sort. I have a small array of just five items, some gelato flavors, and the way the selection sort operates is, you know, it's kind of like the bubble sort. Is it, it's going to examine each element and see, you know, is this one greater than or less than? Um, but with this one, the the search area becomes progressively smaller. It, it's also a nested looping, uh, nested loop algorithm like the bubble sort, but the the area of focus gets progressively smaller. So let's let's walk through this quickly. I'm gonna the outer loop. I'm gonna start at the top of the array, looking at the vanilla in this case, and then the inner loop is going to loop through all the rest of the items. So I would get four iterations of that inner loop on the first iteration of the outer loop. Okay, and what it'll do is as it's iterating through these four items, it's going to look for the lowest value. And in this case, it's going to be the brownie chunk. And what it's going to do is when it finds that low value, assuming it's lower than the starting value, which it is in this case, it's going to replace that in the first position. And then it moves whatever was in the first position to wherever that one was. So vanilla goes to where the brownie chunk was. So the second iteration of the outer loop, we're starting here. This is the new start position, okay? And then the inner loop is going to iterate through what's left, so I get three iterations. It's gonna look for the lowest value, and again, if it finds it, it's going to replace it with, um, with it replace the current value with that low value. Now in this case, chocolate really was the low value, so it didn't, it didn't have any uh, replacement to do in that second iteration of the outer loop. So you can see that the, the area that's being examined and being processed gets smaller and smaller. So with that in mind, let's take a quick look at the code. And um, basically we have some setup here. Uh, as I said, the algorithm is a nested loop type of design. And here we're just kind of starting with the you know, that you have to start somewhere. So you're starting wherever, you, you know, you're starting at the top of the array in, the, in this um, outer loop here. Uh, like first time ever, we're looking at the vanilla. We're saying, okay, this is the minimum value because we have to start somewhere. And then this inner loop is what processes the rest of the elements, okay? And if a lower value is found, we're kind of isolating that, capturing that, and then the swap thing, this is almost like a swap in the bubble sort. It's maybe a, a slicker type of swap than the bubble sort, but that's basically what's going on is that swapping takes place over these four lines. Uh, so anyway, um, you know, what I want you to, to take, take away from this is that this inner loop is go always going one fewer times with each iteration of the outer loop because you're only ever looping through what's left, okay? And um, the, that starting position, if you look at, here's the, um, oh no, here, right here is the start, but let me see if I can highlight that. Okay, that inner loop, we're always moving that start position to, um, you know, closer and closer to the bottom, one closer to the bottom with, with every iteration of the outer loop. Okay, so let's uh, keep talking about this here. Uh, I've, I'm simplifying those two nested loops to the bare minimum here, just so we can focus on uh, kind of a mathematical representation of this algorithm. We have, um, Let's see, so J is the counter of our outer loop and K is the counter of our inner loop. And, you know, let's assume that the array size is five, okay? So for the first iteration of the outer loop, we're going to get four iterations of the inner loop. You know, we talked about that already. The first iteration, first time through ever, I'm looking at vanilla, I'm gonna loop through these four things and see if I can find something that's less than vanilla. Okay, that's the first time through. The second iteration of the outer loop, this is the starting position and I'm looping through 
the remaining three, so I get three iterations of the inner loop, okay? So the third iteration of the outer loop, which is not pictured here, but you know what's going to happen, I would loop through the remaining two, okay? So I get two iterations of the inner loop, and then finally, last time through, notice how you don't go quite all the way up. It's just like the bubble sort. You don't go right up to the edge of the array because then you would walk off the edge. You always go one, one fewer, one less. So the, that's why we're only doing four iterations of this outer loop, even though the array is five, five elements. The fourth iteration of the outer loop will result in just one iteration of, of the inner loop. So with that in mind, that is adding all of these up here. Okay, we have 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, that's 10 iterations total to sort this small array of five elements, okay? So stay with me here. Now, there is a mathematical law called the sum of first positive n integers, and here's the law. All you have to do is, all you have to know is that it exists, and it's easy. Uh, we have, you know, this series of numbers, the first positive numbers going up to uh, n minus 1, however big the series is, um, is equal to this formula here, n minus 1 times n divided by 2. All right, so um, let's try it briefly. Okay, so let's say n equals 5. We would say, now again, we're going uh, up to n minus 1. So we're saying 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, that's the n minus, uh, n minus 1 rather, um, is equal to 10. Okay, let's test it and see if this equals 10. Okay, so we have n is 5 again. Um, n minus 1 is 4 times n, which is 5, that's 20, divided by 2 equals 10. Okay, so we see that the law uh, is solid and it holds for those numbers. So getting back to our selection sort here, okay, recall that we had four iterations, three iterations, two iterations, one iteration for the total algorithm. Or if there's nothing stopping us from writing it like this in the reverse order, one plus two plus three plus four for a five element array, okay, where n equals five. And this sounds just like the sum of first positive n integers, and it is, okay? So we can express the selection sort mathematically like this. If we want to um, shorten that, we would say the selection sort would look like this mathematically. Uh, so here's the thing, though. We're talking about big O, and I've already mentioned in previous videos that we don't care about things like this and this, okay? When you're talking about big O, everything is you know stripped down and simplified. So what we're left with is really n times n, n times n, or n squared, which you might recall from our last video is big O of n squared quadratic time, just like the bubble sort. So the selection sort is in big O of n squared, just like the bubble sort. And, um, you know, it's interesting because in your book, in chapter 9, the author, you know, he starts with the bubble sort, and then he goes into the selection sort and says, well, the, the selection sort is an improvement over the bubble sort, not in so many words, but he, he implies that the selection sort is much better than the bubble sort because you're not having to make all of these swaps. And to that I'll say, yes, it, it is. It is better than the bubble sort, but not by much because there's still, like if we look at it in the context of big O, they're still both in quadratic time. And they're... When the input of the algorithm, in other words, the size of the array increases, the amount of time it, it takes to, uh, to run that algorithm is going to increase exponentially, also with the selection sort as well as the bubble sort. So, um, you know, it, again, if you have to choose between one of the two, the selection sort is better than the bubble sort, but if you're dealing with more than a few dozen items in that array, then neither one of those is really the best choice for, for sorting the contents of those arrays. So there you have it.